Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy. Um, actually, episode one hundred and seventeen. Sorry, we we were off the last couple weeks because I we missed a week and I had a folder for it and everything was all weird. So I don't. Know. Anyway, that this was is, that was the week the board died. The real one seventeen is this week. One sixteen we robot voiced in last week. So <laughs> it sounded uh, really dumb. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Stephen Hawkins stopped by, recorded that for us, and then took off. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name's Ryan Higgins. Who is here with me this week? Brock Sager. Bryce. Elvake Toby. And Charlie. Toby is fairly conscious. Me and Brock are not, though. Well, um, I beat like a redheaded stepchild. As part of our uh, 20th anniversary of the store and my occasional five-year freakout, um, I decided to completely remodel the store, which I always think I can do in eight to ten hours and always turns into a 30 or 40-hour project. <laughs> um, with that in mind... I'm going to do something I've never done before. We still have a lot of stuff in the store that needs to get done, and I need to get it done before tomorrow morning. So, Brock, come take the mic. Why? You're taking over for me, man. I have oh, to get no, this you, register you working. Can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. I, you just I can't need take to, it over. You just need to... I'm going to send Charlie to go on his San Diego Comic-Con rant. Toby's going to fill us in. Bryce is going to give us... during the day. <laughs> well, you guys are going to talk about your pick. Bryce Ooh. is going to give us his pick. I got my Twitter up for some questions. If you want, I can take over, and this can be the All Marvel podcast. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm moving now. I take it all back. I take it all back. No. I take it all back. Um, all right. I will be back. I just need to get this cash register working, and I need to get out of here at a reasonable hour because we've been here for, I want to say, close to 24 hours over the course of the last two days remodeling the store, and there's still too much to do. So uh, uh, this is unfortunately work that only I can do because it's cash register bullshit. So, Brock, have fun. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Charlie, can you go ahead and tell us about your Comic Con experience? Why, yes, I can. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> okay, so my Comic Con experience. No, I am listening. I will be speaking in from time to time. I just shut the mic. He will be yelling like he tells everybody not to do. It's really what he's been doing all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, my Comic Con experience. So I've gotten progressively smarter each year, getting there earlier. Oh, time, time. Brock just had the biggest fucking smile on his face. <laughs> like, there's a, he, I, the, the minute he sat in Ryan's seat and put the headphones on, he had the biggest fucking smile. Because I, I didn't I smack do, I myself in the face with the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> don't even I, I fucking saw that shit. And this is like the weirdest experience, let me tell you. <laughs> All right. Sorry, now Charlie, that we've had our surreal experience here... <laughs> Um, so I've gotten progressively smarter because when I first started going to Comic Con, I always like cut it really, really close, and it always took forever to get bloody into San Diego. And so I've gotten a bit smarter. Got there a bit earlier than I normally do. Got to my parking space, went upstairs. They are really kind of amusing at this point because they have started keeping track of how early they let people in previous years, and they keep beating it. So they weren't supposed to start giving out um, badges till like 3 o'clock, and they started letting people get their badges at 12.30. Bastards. Yeah. I was in line there already, so I didn't mind it. It just meant I had to get in a different line. Because <laughs> it's not like you get your badge and, hey, look, I'm not in line anymore. It's just like, okay, so I go from going into the get my badge line to go wait to be let into the showroom floor line. Mm -hmm. Not a big difference. Um, but so I got my badge, camped out in line, sort of. Set everybody up with their various entertainment thing, playing around on my phone, all that. My kids playing on their DSs and constantly sort of messaging Toby back and forth because Toby's having transportation issues. Yeah, I will fill so, you guys in on that just in a minute. I'll let you continue your story, but I, I remember my days at this so, point. So it was kind of weird because like, I was communicating with Lane, who was still waiting for Toby. Toby was still... I was waiting for a not, plane. He was going to get on a plane. <laughs> So I'm basically hanging out there, and eventually Toby makes it to San Diego. I'm like, okay, pick me up food. <laughs> yes. So that's the first uh, thing I'm you tell Toby line, is give me food. Bring me food. Nice. So he arrives with food for me and the family, and we kind of just, I mean, keep in mind at this point, the showroom floor wasn't opening till 6? Yes. Yeah, till 6. So just because they let us pick up our badge at 1230, I was still in line with my kids for a good four and a half, five hours. Oh, geez. Yeah, they didn't care. They had their DSs and everything <laughs> out. And as Ryan would know, there's that me pass system. So everybody was checking in with everybody. Yeah. And <laughs> Were they playing Animal Crossing? 
No, they were not playing Animal Crossing. Yeah. See, Ryan, this is why Ryan needs to go to Comic Con is just yeah. to get uh, Animal yeah. Crossing points. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Higgins will be going next year. He already guaranteed it. What, what until don't... he changes his tune in three to six months? <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. When when the store uh, needs another remodel, then he will not go. It has nothing to do with the comic books, but what is this Animal Crossing? It's a game for the Nintendo DS. I mean, I've heard of the game, but what do you get points for? You just know. when you pass people, the, the it DS connects. You, like, has this weird like right? connect that's kind of, that's kind of system. Cool. You know, it's funny yeah. because none of us fucking play, and Ryan is just sitting there listening. Yeah, to us all right. Just yeah. Fucking yeah. Game. So how how about comic books? <laughs> Any event. So I guess I'll get back to the story now. Um, so get into the showroom floor. And yes, it was as fucking retarded as every year. The Hasbro line filled up within seconds, and then I jumped over to the NECA line, picked up my Hero Click exclusives for myself and my good friends. Woo. Um, and then I sort of bummed around the showroom floor in general. I went to like Mezco, picked up my exclusives there, went and checked out various hardcover discount places and trades. Like I've I finished my Heroes Reborn trade collection. Nice. I finally picked up the Avengers on that one. So now that's done. I'm still missing you gonna buy Iron it? Man. No, these yeah, are trades. These are the oh. nice, They're the good thick trades. The oh. ones I like. The ones that, yeah, yeah. We they like just the don't have number 13, though. So technically, not quite complete. Now you're going to make me go home and check. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, um, so I got stuff like that out of the way, and I went around and did my typical craziness and i looked at different exclusives and uh, it's always a blast wandering on the showroom floor and wednesday is actually a very good day to do it Mm -hmm. so on thursday again see i'm going to just recount during the days well see you're doing a very good job like giving us chronological order and announcing what time it is but i mean toby was tired no i think i had it in chronological order I just forgot all my days. Well, I could go into details about how I went to Denny's that night at like 11 p.m. And I had to wait for a table. Oh, jeez. You even have to <laughs> yes, wait in what, line that's what, that's to get what, Denny's. That's what <laughs> Comic-Con does to San Diego. Even Denny's has a line. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, that's a crime. I like how you can remember it. Toby couldn't remember it. I'm sure it's because he was tired. I'm sure it wasn't at all because <laughs> no, Toby I, drank I, I infinitely I, more and I, I uh, didn't, I didn't wait parts for of the it. weekend were foggy. I didn't have any yeah. food lines because I tend to yeah. eat at odd hours. Yeah. Toby doesn't eat during Comic-Con. He just drinks his <laughs> Pretty much. meals. I did go to the Tilt to the Quilt for the first time. That was, that was uh, something quilt? new. It's like Hooters, but with less clothes. With old ladies m- quilting? No, no, were It's San Diego. Things were quite nice. I can oh, assure okay. you that. <laughs> were there quilts? Okay. They were wearing very short quilts. <laughs> very okay. short, might I add. <laughs> but no, uh, it's a family. I, well, I think it's a family. I love how it's like it's like Hooters, but it's, but it's a family, family establishment. I think it's a family because there's a bunch of families going there with kids. I'm like, I guess families, that's all right. Families, this families is go to Comic Con. Families go into every. <laughs> I guess. It's a kid's a show. Was Ooh. there a line for it, Toby? No, there was no line. I oh, just wow. walked in. Yeah. Hey, then. So on Thursday. Ryan, Ryan is, is making hand roll. signals. He's and... making rock and roll signs. <laughs> rock, your time is limited. Damn, I didn't even enjoy your power question. while you can. Yeah. Damn it! And then on Thursday, I made the semi mistake of going. You know, I'm going to go hit the showroom floor first, and I I did my thing. I went and I got my wristband. No, graffiti changed the way they were doing it, so I didn't get my wristband on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went through. Walked around the showroom floor, bought a couple of things, bought a couple of hardcovers and such. And then I went, you know what? Now would be a good time to go get in line for Psych. Because I wanted to go see the Psych panel. I did not make it into the Psych panel, even though I was there like two and a half hours before the Psych panel was starting. Get the fuck out, really? Yeah, I didn't make it into the Psych panel. Charlie, but did you pull off the angry Charlie? Did you have to go tan everything? There, Uh There was the panel after the Psych panel, which was the Sherlock panel. So I'm like... Well, at least I'll make it in for the Sherlock panel. I didn't make it in for the Sherlock panel. No way. <laughs> yeah, well, I was talking to Justin yeah. uh, Hayward on the Geek Box, and he went down, and they just did panels. And to get into the panels, they had to get in line at, like, 5 in the morning just to get into the panels. I, I listened to that Geek Box. Yeah, nice. like, yeah. get nice into the panels. It was ridiculous. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Well, Hall H is... Just fucking crazy. So, so, Does so, the so, age stand for hell? So by, by the time Charlie got in line, he had no evil goatee. By the time he actually was not getting any of his panel, his evil go- goatee is slowly well, growing out. It was one of those things where I I was there for four panels primarily. I was there for the psych panel, and I kind of went, you know, I've seen psych a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. 
get to the Sherlock panel, miss that. I'm like, well, none of the actors were there. I wanted to see whatever footage they showed, but I can kind of live with this because this is probably means they're going to have additional Sherlock panels in the future. I got into the X-Files reunion panel, though, and that's one I really wanted to do because Mm. that's not the kind of panel you get every year at Comic-Con. That's a very rare thing when they do kind of a uh, they they've done like a reunion panel for Farscape one year and mm. they did Firefly and now they've done X Files and it's always really cool to go to those panels and I did like that it was an interesting thing of who's who because it had um, David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson as like the actors but there were like another six people at the table with them or seven people with them because they're of course Chris Carter. Mm-hmm. But then there were a bunch of other writers and stuff who worked on the X Files, and that was sort of the weird thing because each writer kind of got this big introduction of sort of like so and so who went on to create Breaking Bad and uh, like, okay. <laughs> so that yes, dude is tall. Yeah. But it was one of those things where like tons and tons of people went on from the X Files to like other successful shows. Like none of them had a and hasn't worked a day since X. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd go to that panel and just see David Duchovny as Hank Moody, and I couldn't. I just. I... They did mention that a few times, and like somebody asked if. Um, if there's they, 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 Well, no. If they would ever actually like do the sort of like reunion on some other project they're working on, David Duchovny is like, no. This is like the dynamic between Mulder and Scully is a little too sacred to him mm. that he wouldn't want to. Like he 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 made it sound like he doesn't want to work with her unless she's playing Scully. <laughs> Could be Scully on California Yeah, this is true. (laughs) But um, no, it was a good panel. I mean, I always like those reunion panels. I like them talking about the various things they did, talking about their favorite monster of the week, talking about their favorite bad guys, and no, did they did did they talk about uh, the comic book? Seasonal, seasonal. Um, they had a separate panel for the comic book. They they didn't mention the comic book okay. and stuff, and uh, it was sort of interesting because Chris Carter sort of talked about how, while it's called season ten, he kind of used it as a completely different animal. Mm-hmm. Like it's all. Don't get me wrong. It's all sort of greenlit by him. He supports it one hundred percent. But it sounds like he has no intention of if they ever make an X Files three having like the. Com- that like, the comic book story go to the movie yeah okay. yeah he, he he definitely seems to see that as sort of a separate entity and all that so that was that's fine talking to comic books so someone asked yeah. matt smith if he read the uh, star trek uh Kof- who book and he didn't even know about it i thought that was kind of <laughs> interesting he <laughs> what there's a star trek doctor who comic yeah. yeah anyway carry on and then um the panel after that was they've gotten into these like entertainment weekly panels and TV guide panels at mm-hmm. Comic-Con where they kind of go, "Well, who's here anyways?" Oh, you got to see Matt Smith. Yes, I got to see Matt Smith in that panel and like there was a guy from Teen Wolf in that panel and um I got to do a Teen Wolf shout out to to Rob Hall and the guys I used to work with, porn and all those guys, they're all in, uh, from Fair Clean and moved on to Teen Wolf, so yeah. go watch that show. Support but, it. Yeah, it was. I mean, they always put on a good panel, but I always feel sorry for a lot of the panelists because it's like they bring out these like five people or whatnot from various shows, yet it's always only one or two of them that really get all the like fan the questions yeah. and attention. And it's always like, I kind of well, feel that's bad probably be- for the guy who doesn't get a single question. That's probably yeah, because a lot of people can't. You though is that Teen Wolf? Oh yeah, yeah, Teen Wolf had as many people going up to ask questions about it as Doctor Who. Oh wow, which is kind like of scary. Matt Smith. Like typically, Matt Smith dominates any sort mm-hmm. of thing that I see him, and and this it was it was a toss up. I can't say which one brought in more people, and that was kind of well, amazing. Maybe that's because everyone was waiting for Doc- in line for waiting for Doctor Who, so they already, didn't get into this ready. panel. Yeah. Oh, that I'll get to the Doctor Who line. Oh, Don't I know. you worry. I know. <laughs> so I after that, I kind of went. You know what? The rest of my main panels are Sunday. I have some mm. stuff I want to do, but my main panels are Sunday. <laughs> you guys can't Sorry, see this, everybody's but having fun Ryan watching just, like Ryan, Ryan just do a victory pants. jig and no, that was that, no, was, no. that was the cash register hitting me in the knee. Yeah, oh. Ryan just got hit in the knee oh, by the cash not a happy register. End. We can put padding on that if you want. So right. it continues. Well, so Friday, so Friday, I again did my typical go down to the showroom floor, look around. I mean, at this point, and this is the thing about the Comic Con showroom floor. 
there is a shit ton of stuff to see. Like mm. by Friday, I still hadn't walked through the DC booth. Oh wow! Like I, it was there. I knew it was there, but there were all this other kind of booths. So I finally went and got my wristband for graffiti mm-hmm. to pick up the stuff I wanted for myself there and the stuff for Brock and Thank stuff you. for other people. Um, so of course, once you have the wristband, you don't have to go right away. So I just put that off till later in the day. But I. Um, like stopped over by the Funko line and that's when I realized how bad Funko was because the Funko line was one of those where once you get led into the Funko booth, you can spend as much time as you want in there. Mm-hmm. And they only let in probably six people uh, at a time. Ten, maybe 10. I don't know. Six to 10 people into the booth at a time. Because they can take all their time they want in there. And they can take all the time they want. They get a bag. They go around. They can buy as many of the... They had like over 50 exclusives at Funko. Oh, jeez. So you really sort of take your time going around. And they had no limit. And that's the thing that breaks the system. Because there were a limited amount of all these things. So what happens is you get the people who know the system know exactly where to line up exactly how to get there as quickly as possible and they buy everything the they line maxes out very quickly because while they let 10 people in there there's no more than 50 who can actually physically line up in the space there before they cap the line until oh, they have geez. room again yeah so they and from what i can tell the like, line was moving really slowly because like, i would i would swing by and look at charlie's head and it was not moving and like um the way a lot of these other places have worked, like Hasbro has a thing where you like pre-fill out what you want and mm-hmm. then they just grab it for you, put it together for you, and boom, ring out, you're done. Mattel, same kind of thing. Fun coach, just let you take your time, scroll, stroll through there. For, and like because it's a they store have, inside of... Yeah. Oh, yeah, they had the geez. whole little and corner unit. Like, like be, the way they laid it out is kind of like shaded off. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And because there's no limit on how many of what you can buy, the ones that were the hot flippers for eBay always sold out before the line had a chance to go through once. Oh, Jesus. Like within that first 50 people or something, all the My Little Ponies would be gone, all the minions would be gone. All, like, I wanted my mermaid. Yeah. Don't look I, at me I, like I, that. I tried going. It shiny. Through- <laughs> I tried going through the line to get the Little Mermaid two pack for Toby and my wife, and that was. And this is the thing that kills me about that line, like the the pain of being in that line. So you're standing there waiting to be let into the booth. You can see all the items on the shelf. The Little Mermaid was actually staring, like it was the thing right up against the window. Mm-hmm. So I could see how many were left, and they had quite a few when I started. But before I had a chance to move up like one spot or two spots, I got to watch the last one get taken off that oh, shelf. Geez. Did you like yell through the glass at the person that took it? Damn you! But it, it was just one of those things where it. it they, I just want to know he didn't do a, a common better then. way of just letting people mark down which exclusives they want, have them ready to just bring them out when they get mm-hmm. up there, um, have a limit on how many of each exclusive can be bought that way it goes to more than 10 people yeah, yeah. Um, well, it seems to me it's like these lines could be set up where like you get in line you get your little form and as you're going through the line you can actually like they have the things displayed so the line is actually in essence what like a drive through window where you yeah. see a menu I mean, that's kind of what hasbro and mattel is oh hasbro and especially they kind of give you this sheet and you have to kind of and they even tell you what's limited like yeah. this one you can only buy one this one mm-hmm. you, you write the number in you hand them the paper and they hand it to you yeah the only problem is with funko uh, yes they should definitely limit their stuff on the other hand though funko is not very known for the uh, the, the the paint jobs a guy like me who would have been a total asshole going no Give me another one. No, give me another one. No, give me another one. So it would have taken just as much longer. I think most people, though, if you wanted to have a thing where so-and-so can go in and look around. But for me, I would rather have just filled up my thing, go through like an express checkout. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly, their, their paint job's gotten better over the years. But when it first started, boy, man, there's some cricket eyes on those things. Yes. Yeah. But no. So Funko, while all the employees I dealt with at Funko were nice people and all that, their management of everything was just like my epic fail for the con. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is sort of the other thing. I've learned to read the Comic-Con schedule to the point where I could kind of go, okay, so I want to go to Flashpoint. 
Well, these are the panels below before Flashpoint. This is going to be the big panel people lined up for mm -hmm. that's going to empty out when it gets out. So I just need to be in line by the time this panel is yeah. <laughs> happening because for the most part, unless you are desperately trying to get into a particular panel, the line will empty out when people realize they're not going to get into the panel they're trying to see. Yeah. So like um, for Flashpoint, I was there a panel or two ahead of time and I literally just walked in. Yeah. Because everything had already let out. That was like the big draws for the day. There was no line for once in Ballroom 20. Mm -hmm. Just walked in, sat down, waited through a couple of panels, which were like the panel that I walked in on, which doesn't shock anybody, is the following. Mm -hmm. And while well, I understand. Which I'm still questioning how they can continue it. Well, it sounds like what's his name didn't die. No, what? Ah, ah. Am I supposed to say spoilers before that, guys? Uh, I, I don't. Well, we actually kind of talked Don't about this in the, in, in the line, but yeah. Any event. Um, <laughs> it's a show that didn't think like it should continue or could continue. It was continuing. Yeah. But in any event, so I sat through the panel on that, and that was kind of interesting because I did watch the first season, and I don't remember what panel was off or that's how impactful it was or whatever. But then I got to the Flashpoint movie, and I was happy. Flashpoint was awesome. Mm-hmm. I greatly enjoyed it, and then I stayed for the panel they did afterwards, which was kind of a cool panel. I liked the fact that, like, so Sam Daly was doing the voice of Superman in this movie, and Tim Daly, who is his dad, was in the audience, so... <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I was like, well, it was kind of cool because my dad voiced Superman, and he's actually over there in the audience. Nice. <laughs> no, did he, no, it would have been funny if he went into line to ask a question. Well, son, I have a question for you. No. <laughs> and so it was a good panel, but like the main thing, like the thing that kept you there in general was the promise to announce what the lineup for next year's animated properties were. Mm -hmm. And of course, they had already um, sort of pre-announced the Justice League War yeah. one, which is going to be based on that first um, Justice League Origins hardcover. It was Jeff Origins, Jones. right? Yeah, Jeff Jones. Origins. Yeah. The New yeah. 52 yeah. Uh, volume yeah. one. So Origins, it's going to yes. be based on that. And they even put a little like... Not, I don't think it was technically after the credit, but they put a little scene towards that in Flashpoint, which was cool. Um, They're doing Marvel teaser in Flashpoint movies? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, of course, I'm happy. This is three Jeff Johns in a row, and that's mm -hmm. you're not going to get me happy. Well, Flashpoint comes out tomorrow, right? Yes, Flashpoint comes out tomorrow. Nice. Um, and yes, you can get the little Professor Zoom figure at Best Buy. Wait, wait, you didn't actually say the whole lineup yet. It's uh, Okay. Yeah. So, yes, back to the lineup. So, they're doing that. Then they're doing the Batman and Son based on the Grant Morrison story. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool because yes. it's Nightwing. Uh, spoilers. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Wait, what? Is that even accurate? No. It's, it's no. Damien. No, it's Nightwing. Isn't it Batman and Robin? I'm not talking Robin? about Batman and Robin. I'm talking about Batman and Son. Oh, and man. I was so excited Damien. because I thought it was Batman and Robin this whole time. <laughs> Damn it. that doesn't exist. Damn it. And then they're doing a direct -a video based on the Batman Arkham video games called like Batman Arkham Assault or Ark, like that would Attack be awesome. on Arkham or something like that. Is that uh, now, is that new or is that going to be based on the stuff from like Arkham City, the Arkham it City comics? It sounds and Arkham like Unhinged. it's going to be new. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I don't know full details other than the fact that they got everybody to do the typical woo cheering when they like kind of went, and somebody familiar will be voicing Batman in that one. And, of course, everybody explodes for Kevin Conroy because everybody loves Kevin Conroy. Yeah. Who's yeah. Kevin Conroy? He's the motherfucking the, Batman. Yes. Who's the guy from the animated series? Yep. yep. Really? Yeah. Yep. I don't know his name, but I love that guy. Oh, yeah, dude, everybody loves that guy. He, he's been in so many Batman voicing yeah. jobs. Oh, really? DC's, yeah. Been, yeah. DC's been doing a really good job with that Arkham game yeah. universe, like especially with the games and then the branching off of the comics. Kind of and the new game's team. coming out in September, right? Yeah, but that's mm -hmm. not the yep. same team, though. Uh, I'm actually Wait, kind of really? curious about yeah, what they're doing. They took yeah. it fully in-house and... The one one thing I really is it going to be as good as Arkham City because that was that, that shit was dope. I hope so, but I see. I don't really care that they took it in house. I know I should, but I am a story guy, and Paul Dini wrote the first two games, mm -hmm. and they intentionally didn't have Paul Dini write this one, which weirds me out because it's not that he decided he didn't want to do it anymore. He specifically asked if he should like because he was taking on other projects. He's like, well, should I? 
hold off on taking on these other yeah. products projects and they're like no 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 take care of the projects and he was like because okay. origins is supposed to come before yeah arkham but Asylum. still why wouldn't you want dini to write it i just don't get that origins like, is the one that's coming out next yeah, yes. yeah. and it it, it's not being voiced by kevin conroy mainly either it's weird i'm worried but yeah. i am curious to see what the team is doing next though yeah. i hear rumors yeah. Uh, it is strictly rumors that they might be working on a Justice League game. So. Oh, nice. You no, know, I love the game. I wasn't the biggest fan of the story, though. I'm not as much of a story guy, and so there's probably facets. Well, well that, that explains all the yeah, Marvel stuff if he doesn't. Yeah, no, no. I'm totally just. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, not yeah, fun. Hey, you set yourself up for that one. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. I had to walk into that yeah, one. Toby 1, Bryce 0. Uh, exactly. No, no, yeah. don't worry. By the end of this, I'll probably have, like, negative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, so were we on Saturday for you? Yes, we're on Saturday. Okay, we're on Saturday. So, similar to Friday, I did my typical wander around the Sherm floor, wander up. I think it was that was the day the True Blood was in ballroom 20, so I went, okay, as long as I'm in line by True Blood, that mm-hmm. will empty the room, and then I can get in for the arrow panel. Ooh. Yes. So, I went to the arrow panel, and the arrow panel was badass, and anybody who hasn't looked at the teaser for the upcoming season should... Now, mind you, it boggled my mind a little bit since they're just like, yeah, we've only formed fil- like filmed four days. So we put together this little teaser from like four days worth mm-hmm. of filming. I'm like, wow, that's a damn impressive trailer it for only like, four days. It's, I, I well, half the, the trailer is footage well, from the first season. No, that's like yeah. three quarters of the trailer yeah. is. Yeah. But the nice thing about that trailer was is it summed up the whole first season. Yeah. Really nicely, and then gave you just enough oh, of. Oh, Mike Black Canary's in it. Yeah. Spoilers. Hell yeah. And um, spoiler, I mean, I thought that was pretty. During the known, panel, they, they, they had don't watch John the Barrowman come out, no. which was cool. Wow. That spoiler, he's back. Well, they they confirmed. Toby's full of spoilers today. They confirmed John Barrowman's going to be in the second season, but like everything else, it could be flashbacks. Like, yeah. like no. we don't know in, what in, exactly. In that the means. second season, he's going to realize he's actually Captain Jack Harkness, and he can't <laughs> actually die. Oh jeez. <laughs> And actually, that was one of my favorite stories from the panel is one of the mornings when I was walking around before going to the panels later in the day, I was walking around with my kids and we were walking by one of those like celebrity autograph booths. Mm -hmm. And it was before he was supposed to be there, like he was there chilling out while they were getting everything ready. And he was just chilling out there. And I took my kids up. And of course, they know him from Captain Jack and Doctor Mm -hmm. Who and all that. And Connor kind of Connor will talk anybody's ear off about Cyberman. <laughs> Trust me, I know. Except for somebody who's actually part of Doctor Who because oh, wow. he gets a little flustered a little or nervous. shy or yeah. whatever. And he was a really nice guy. He was kind of like talking to him and trying to sort of talk not just at them. Like I really, he was saying like I really like your shirts and they mm. were wearing like Spider Man shirts and all that, but. No, I, I always have to give a nice shout out when somebody gives a good memory for my kids like that, and yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. Um. So that 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 was definitely one of my highlights because I I definitely really appreciated that and like that. Um. Did you get sound bite from him? No, I didn't. Man. Not even for my other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not playing favorites. Yeah, that's nope. okay. Nope, I didn't get a single sound bite for anything. Want want. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then Sunday, I guess we're on now. Yes, should be Sunday now. Yeah, Sunday, the yeah. Doctor Who line. Well, okay. Sunday so, actually started on Saturday. Yes. So <laughs> is, this when your, I'm is leaving, this your like two in the morning, three in the morning line story? No. <laughs> oh, no. When I'm leaving the con on Saturday, I'm uh-huh. leaving the con at like 530 going, okay, I'm going to go home. Organize everything, pack up the car. That way, Nadia just needs to check out in the morning because I'm going to go camp out in the lot. Like, and Connor, my oldest, was like, I want to go camp out in the line with her. I'm like, okay, fine. As long as you're sure you want to come with me, you're welcome to come with me. Let me add that um, the other kid was fairly jealous of that. Fuck, yeah. they were going to do something very fun. It was like, man, I'm totally missing out on something. I'm sleeping in a line. <laughs> but um, so I'm leaving the con, and the line was already passed. Like when I've been known to show up there at like three o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. to go in line, it was already past that at like five thirty in so the afternoon. So alarms started going off in your head, and basically, yeah, okay. like not alarms like "Oh my god, I have to get back here in five minutes," but more like, "Yeah, I have to get back here as soon as possible." Could so. I leave my child here and he be safe? <laughs> 
Yeah, no. no, no, I can't do that. So I went back to the hotel room, went with my plan, got everything ready, had a quick dinner, um, took a shower and all that. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to yeah. be that guy in line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so then Connor and I go out to go catch the shuttle bus, which starts being a repeat performance from previous years of bus driver comes, says he's not picking up. Bus driver comes, says oh, he's not no. picking up. Bus driver comes like two seconds later, and it's the empty bus relieving the previous bus driver. But from what I understand, there were other people who missed, had the experience of bus mm. after bus after bus before that one. So I happen to not be so screwed over by the shift change this year. This was like tail end right before the oh, okay. shift. Um, but so Connor and I catch the bus. We get over there. And this is one of those things where I'm not sure how well I can communicate this, but I'm going to try. So there's an area by the convention center that's all sort of tented off, intended for people camping out to wait for cons because that's where most people go to wait most of the night. And then around 5 in the morning, it starts getting longer, and then they have to condense and all that. Well, this year, and this was only at like 11, 10, 30, 11 at night. Mm-hmm. So it was already out of that tented area. It already wrapped around the convention. Already wrapped back towards the harbor. Went Lord, all the way back. Chip. So, like, <laughs> literally, if I was smarter, and if they were directing people to the line better, instead of saying going that way, they should have told me just walk across the street to the hotel. Yeah. Because I went all the way over here, then back up along the harbor, then back over to so the you hotel. Walk, you, you followed the entire line when all you had to do was cross the street. Yeah, basically. Nice. Um, so, get in line there, and I guess the actual line people went... Yeah, we can't really have people blocking off the hotel here. So they like slowly kind of moved the line so it would wrap back around, which fucking sucked because it put us right by the water so you had a much cooler breeze. Yeah, I'm like I'm like thinking you should just put these people just straight into the Pacific. Just <laughs> just aim the line. It, if you hit the Pacific, well, that's well, our don't, cap. Don't tempt them because I'm I'm sure some that's people our cap. are thinking about throwing each other into the Pacific. Yeah. It's like boom, if you hit the Pacific, you're but, done. So, no, I no, mean, no, there's there's some correspondence I mean, going on here. You'll have to stop earlier cuz the tide. You don't want anybody, yeah. you know, yeah. being sucked out, but But deal. so yeah, well. but, this no, no. was 11.30 at night, and the line is already where it should be at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. Oh, no. Now, there, there's some correspondence going on here that I'll uh, intervene here with. Yeah. I think around 7 or 8, Charlie is, like, texting me, okay, I'm heading to line. And guess what I was doing at that point? I was running away from... It was from a bit s- later than that. Oh, okay, fine, it was a little yeah. later. But guess what I was doing at the point? I was running away from zombies. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it, zombies are going to get me. I get a text. He's like, hey, man, I'm in line. Oh, hey. Jesus Christ, man. There's Toby, zombie apocalypse If happening. zombies are chasing you, yes. don't check your text messages. Well, you know, it might be it's an not important safe. message. It's not safe. Yeah. This is a Petco? Yeah. They're shambling after you, and you're like, "Yeah, they're shambling." I can check Charlie. <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> well, that's okay. He didn't well, no, survive. I was really hoping for a you know a girl, but it was Charlie and telling me where the light was. Um, Just some, well, you yeah, know, yeah. you know. But so, um, sorry, I didn't respond. I was a little busy running away from matter. zombies. So basically, yeah, that was a little insane. But I'm not. Here's what I think happened to the line. So it was the very last Breaking Bad panel. Uh-huh. Because they were there at Comic Con before Doctor Who, yeah, and um, I feel bad for Supernatural because I don't think there were very many Supernatural fans of that line. That was the first panel of the day, yeah. But um, there were a fair amount of Breaking Bad people, and there were a ton of Doctor Who people. And I think what basically happened is it was one of those social media explosions where once the line hit a certain point, everybody was sort of texting everybody and tweeting. and Yeah, I think like, I think the, the tweeting made people go, oh, shit, I better get in line now. Like, literally, there are people who grabbed the blanket from their hotel room and dragged They were just it down sleeping there. with their yeah, hotel <laughs> blanket on the floor. Yeah, because you can just leave that stuff. You throw it away. I mean. Yeah. Uh, sure, you can get a charge, but yeah, sure. <laughs> but, yeah, so it was really, really insane. And... It made me wonder to a degree just how silly this is getting because so so by next year you're gonna you have, have to, to move your car Friday. by like two thirty if you park at any of the parking structures there you have yeah. to have your car out by like two thirty but you can't li- like park till like five five thirty in the morning so, so if you're trying mess. to camp out you can't drive yourself you have to be either dropped off or take uh-huh. like <laughs> like if that's two people oh my yeah. God. 
It's like it's like a tag team event. It's like I think all right, Bryce is yeah. just tired listening to this. All right, you're gonna. Uh, I was gonna go next year, but fuck that. <laughs> I've heard like three different podcasts about San Diego Comic Con stories, and now well, I'm just but totally here's San Diego Comic Con stories. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's the thing. Don't, don't worry, I got the, some fun stuff to fill in with. The the psych panel and that stuff, I kind of feel like. Literally, if I had gotten in line 10 minutes earlier, I would have gotten into Sherlock. If I had gotten in line a half hour earlier, I would have gotten into Psych. Mm. It wasn't, mm. it was just me Same. misjudging what it would take. To Same here. When I was trying to go to Orphan Black panel, I got distracted by the colorful tiny Teen Titans blow up thingies in front of the Hilton that we just had to go look. Missing by like eight people. They have people. names, Toby. They have names. Yeah, Robin, Cyborg, Raven, oh, uh, Beast Boy, and. These and were cosplayers? No, no they were, these oh, were oh, giant, oh, oh, like, oh, oh. Um, oh. bounce house sorry, balloon. Sorry. If, if they were cosplayers, thing. man, they're like. 20 feet tall toss players so that'd be pretty awesome. darn, that'd be yeah. pretty damn impressive um it's but, the the macy's day parade balloons it's their other job during and the they had a lego the hobbit uh, hole and stuff that i was yeah. trying to steal the pretzel from and stuff like that but um i missed over from black by eight people because i got distracted the colorful colors and the mystery van and stuff like that and i was fairly mad was about because you had to relieve yourself on the mystery Sherlock. mobile yeah, that happened later that or night. That was like the next night. Uh-huh. See, that's because he was pissed off at it. He went back Ooh, for revenge. Zing. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's that's, that's later at night. But uh, yeah, see, things are totally coming back to me. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So next year, Toby, you can talk about Comic Con a week later. <laughs> uh, a lot of it, <laughs> or maybe I have evidence. <laughs> a lot of Comic Con really just has to do with prioritizing. Well, prioritizing what you're trying to do yeah. and committing to it. Meaning Tatiana Maslany. If you were fully committed to that, I you wouldn't have was. stopped to oh. look at the... <laughs> that's, true. that's true. That's, that's true. true. But but I did get to see her walking in and walking out like yeah. a crazy person. Wow. And that's all that matters. And he was drooling people, just so you know. No. 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 No, what he doesn't tell you is he hit every bar that night hoping to run into her. Actually, I did. It was kind of funny. When I missed the panel, I told Nate, "Uh, no problem, man. We're just going to run into her at night. Because previous year, we ran into Maggie Q. Previous year, we ran into the other Nikita chick. Awesome. Yeah, I was just like, dude, fuck it. Just have a good time. When you have a positive, good time, shit will just happen. You know, it's just. Yeah, so I was like. Except it didn't. (laughs) It it did not, but, you know, I have hope for next year. You know, Tatiana, if you're listening, I'll see you at the bar. (laughs) <laughs> next year next year so just so you guys know she's not going to go to any bars next year it's quite possibly now yeah, yeah. she's got those uh, restraining orders already uh, being handed to me look there's a guy outside yeah. the window right He's now knocking it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a process server yeah. oh. you know I didn't talk about the actual panels on Sunday just the the line <laughs> well no I mean because you got you got to see all of it right yeah so Supernatural yeah um, I saw Supernatural Breaking Bad was a great panel now, I, did you see him on the floor? No, because okay. he was wandering the floor before the Breaking Bad panel, so oh, I was already in line. In line. That sucks. <laughs> um, he should have walked down the line. Yeah, he should have. That, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh! but that morning when we were in line, though, it was really funny. Wasn't there a uh, Heisenberg uh, cosplayer that was yelling across to another line, and there was a dude, a young dude in like a red hoodie? Yeah. I mean, he was not meant to dress up Jesse, but I was like, dude, that's totally Jesse and Heisenberg yelling at each other. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I heard yeah. that um, Brian Cranston and Matt Smith and Hugh Jackman were all doing their own cosplaying. Yeah. Uh, of the, of, were they all of them well, themselves? Brian, no, no. no. Uh, Brian Cranston was, was the best one. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Just because he, he, was he had like a... Uh, Heisenberg head, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he came on stage with it, and oh yeah, you know, so yeah. I was I was so tired at that point when he came on stage. I'm like, shit, he just looks just like he does on the show, not knowing he's wearing a fucking mask, right? And then you he didn't just think down. his head was a little big? No, well, I I was a little sleep deprived. I'm a little sorry, right? So I'm fucking mad. He looks just like he does on the show. That's fucking brilliant, right? He sits down, he starts taking his mask. I'm like, What's he doing to his face? <laughs> I was like, really? Like, oh, shit. Jesus, you were sleep deprived. That was very much sleep And then he deprived. started making out with the mask. And- yeah, that was <laughs> well, scary, I too. That too. I think yeah. I heard about it on the Geek Box. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Was that, yeah, he put the mask on the microphone. And, and so he, he started, was just yeah. like... Bleh, bleh, bleh. It, that was really scary, too, because I was in and out of sleep, right? So I wake up, and all of a sudden he's making out with the mask. I go, oh, shit. <laughs> I missed a little bit here. <laughs> no. So the Breaking Bad <laughs> panel was good? Yeah, Breaking Bad panel was good. Doctor Who panel was awesome, even though Stephen Moffat had to threaten people. Didn't he? Doesn't he do that every year? No. Has the threat been? I heard about this threat. Has the threat been? Um, I guess heated. So far, nice. Well, he, 
So it's for those like, of you that don't know, the, well, you when Stephen all Moffat know. says something in his uh, accent, you know, people tend to listen and be fearful. Well, that and I think all the people there were diehard enough fans to realize when Stephen Moffat says something like that, he means it. He's not. Mm. He's not towing the company line. He's not like. He's not effing around. <laughs> yeah. He's the man. You can say fuck. I think effing just sounds like fucking shit. <laughs> Who cares? But Doctor no, Who panel. It, it, it was. The, the trailer was so good. Yes. It, it's one of those like Catch-22s where I understand I wasn't supposed to record it, to put it online, but I really wish I had recorded it just to watch it again, god damn it. Yeah, it's so something I'd watch just, over and over and over so and over. everyone knows, I guess this trailer is a Doctor Who porn for Doctor Who enthusiasts. They, yes. They will watch it over and over. I mean, to be clear, it's the equivalent of, the equivalent Doctor, of Who Doctor, Doctor Who porn. It is not Doctor Who. There, there is, is Doctor Who porn out there somewhere, what? though. Oh, God. Oh, great. Toby's going to go search me for it. Toby was talking to me about it before the podcast. Really? I did? <laughs> Man, I was really delirious. Yeah. Uh, no, great. Was... To- to- Toby's going to be on his computer tonight looking up Doctor Who porn. I got to search my history if I found it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen this one. <laughs> Boring. Uh, no, no. What was really cool, I mean, I think I said it last last week. It, it definitely felt like a crossover between the Moffat and the Russell T. David years. It felt like a total like team up. From the trailer, I would I would agree with that, but I'm... I I know you're hoping for more. I'm just I'm happy just Rose Tyler is back. I'm totally speechless just and because I, I need this fucking special already. God damn it! You just have what? You have to wait till November, right? Yes. Okay. Till til til November at noon because they're doing this simulcast thing. So it airs the at the same song. time everywhere, so nobody gets spoiled. So that day you're going to take like a two hour lunch? No, it's on a Sunday, I think, or a Saturday. I don't know. It's very close to Thanksgiving. I know that. You can turn that mic on. Yes, Can you hear me? Comics Conspiracy will be going to the uh, 12 noon showing at the Mercado Theater for the uh, Is there? Doctor Who. Well, Fuck yeah. The, more than likely. Really? We will be going. Oh, oh hell Saturday. yeah. It's a Saturday, Marshall, you're working. Dude, holy shit. Yeah, we're totally going. Yeah. I, I was actually Damn hoping. It. Actually, I was totally. I need you, that now. No, you well, can't, no, no, you no, can't no. Knock no. Me. no. You know, actually, totally. You set up the wrong way, Ryan, because I totally thought you were going to say the comic conspiracy is going to do the Doctor Who experience in England, and we're all going together. I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> Let down, Ryan. Let down. No, I, I'm very <laughs> glad to hear that because I wasn't sure if it was going to come to theaters with the. Because they're doing the theaters in the UK and stuff, but I haven't read any confirmation. You're, you're, you're fine. You're fine. It's going to be 3D. I, there is no confirmation yet that it's coming to the Mercado, but it has to. All the others have come over, or not Mercado. I'm sorry, um, uh, Valco, but oh. all the other type of stuff oh. like that has come here. Everybody's yes. going to get lost. Now. So, so, so yes. we're going to have to Valco, stand in line Mercado. on Thursday. Well, it's at noon. It's noon Saturday. Yeah, so we have to stand in line on Thursday, I, I repeat. Be, I don't think we'll be. I, well, fine. You're more than welcome fine. to. Charles will be in line. <laughs> you're more than welcome to. I'll go about 10 o'clock on Saturday. Uh, good luck finding us. Charles and his kids with their DS. Yeah. will be in line on Thursday. Yeah. yeah, honestly, you know, you know, you get this all the lines we want, but, you know, you actually make some good friends in line. It's, yeah. uh, it's kind of cool. I mean, all these people are here for the same reason. They like the same exactly, things. Exactly, absolutely. See, he it's, stares uh, at, like, blow-up people. I just hang out with cosplayers in line. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would think, yeah. And if Omar were here, he'd probably be with Charlie, hanging out with cosplayers. But yeah, be, yeah. I, I, I go after the blow up dolls or 50%. outside the Hilton for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and and hey, pee on things. Me. And pee on a mystery van. Jeez. Yeah. So, All right. So, so no. the, the the bottom line is, as much as Comic Con can kind of sound like torture, it's a lot of fun and sounds like torture. Yes, I know it sounds like torture. It's but torture for the things that you want. You like really, really want. If you really, really want, so that you have to, you have to take some so pain I have with to, like, it. Way torture with something that I well, want. But versus... it's like a battle thing, plan like, to go straight to something you love. If you had waited for the Marvel panel, oh, the Marvel panel, like the Marvel oh. movie panel, they had the big like. The actor who plays Loki came out in character. Oh, dude, I heard that they had the power outage. Yeah, Yeah, man, he was Loki. Loki showed up. He was like, kneel before me, Comic Con people. Experienced all that, seen all the exclusive footage. Right Uh, before that, no, no, see, I don't like, I don't, uh, this is just a personal thing for me, is I don't like trailers. So I, uh, oh, but Andrew Garfield showed up as Spider Man and was in character. 
That's kind of cool. That's really and cool. And most of this stuff was scheduled the same day, if I recall. So I think that was also the same day with the Wolverine and X Men panel. Oh, wasn't quite, it? quite possible. I don't and know. I know with that they had like the entire cast from um, the Days of Future's past movie. So oh, you have the I old and, and the I new. Saw a sick and picture of yeah, yeah, past double Bender, Stewart, yeah. McKellen, and uh, that guy that Everybody. nobody cares about. Yeah. So young Professor X. So yes, uh, if, yeah, James well, McAvoy. Yeah. James McAvoy, thank you very much. If you had My gone point. out, waited in line since five o'clock in the morning, and there's you no were way there the line for, for that. that one was five o'clock in the morning. Yes, five. No way. That's yes. the way this stuff goes. It, well, it's it's, all it's about, anything in whole. Oh, by the way, I can do a review of the Wolverine. Saw the Wolverine. Yeah, no, I, I, so I, I, I have seen it. I've no, seen it. I've seen it. Okay, Fucker. never mind. Really? You guys saw <laughs> it? We'll save it. We'll save it. It's a professional homework necessity. I agree, but forty percent uh, of the uh, of the room has not seen it. So what forty? Uh, Brock and Ryan. Uh, Ryan been and I because we've the been store. remodeling the store. Guess what? I yeah, was Thursday here, night, motherfucker. Midnight, you guys weren't remodeling the store. Yeah, yeah. We're also partying with Kid Rock. I was That's here true. Saturday night. It's my birthday, motherfucker. I, I know. <laughs> and CC Top, by the way. Um, finish your story. But I guess my point is, I anybody who was there for that kind of stuff, there for the stuff they love. The line never quite seems like a burden. Uh, like, yeah, and also, yeah. like I said, I, that's fair. the stuff I, I you're in, and you really do make friends. I made numerous people and that I like, really am friends with at this point. Everybody in the line that day would have loved to talk Marvel with you. Oh, yeah. So there's no like, tomorrow. Seriously. San Diego, uh, you're all, you're you're all there. <laughs> Bryce is like, there's someone that will talk with the me. the stuff you love. Oh. Meaning you are there with the people who love the same stuff as you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, so the 1%, you can go hang out with them. The 1%? That's a different 1% than I'm a part of, Brock. No, oh. the 1% of people that like Marvel. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> different, different 1%. That's, um, that's more than 1%, Brock. I think that okay, it's 1. more than 5. 1%. I think that we could ask uh, Ryan how many books he sells that are Marvel versus DC. Zing! Oh, kind of. oh, oh. Um. There we go again. <laughs> anyway. I can't talk numbers, so. I know. That's why Ryan's all safe in the corner yeah. back there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll take uh, I'll take Ryan on, except that I don't own a comic shop. Anyway, speaking of comics, we got um, questions. Are we uh, are we good to go? Oh, do you? Oh, on, should I fill we, in my days? Has, has the questions. story has the story ended? No, yes, no, the we'll story until next week. The We're story my has this is already been too heavy on, oh. on STCC. All right, Charles, thank you very much. Oh, wait, sorry, no. Oh, right. oh, Ryan's holding Power Girl. Twitter question. Oh, Just it's checking time. It's scary. Yeah, do your book pick and then uh, do some questions. Okay. Wait, we got to talk about the book, Ryan. Oh, we're going to talk about this book, Mother. Yes. So the, the book we're talking to, about. To nice. There huh? you go. There's your bust. There's your oh, bust. Yeah, there, it's literally the bust that I will be looking at, it seems like. Um, but if we do my Comic-Con daytime stories next week, people are going to be so tired of Comic-Con. No, all right. Then we're going to skip them. You missed out. We did two weeks of Comic-Con. Let's move on. All right. All right. So the, com- uh, the Conspiracy Book Club. Selection was clone. Woo! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, just so you guys know. Bye. Oh, I, I need it in front David of me. I don't. Schuldner, uh, San Jose. Oh, no. Juan Jose. Juan Jose. Wow. RIP. Uh, RYP. Unbelievable. <laughs> like racism alert. Why is the only ESL person here? I can't say the names. Uh, and okay. Felix Serrano. There's no D. It's Felix. Serrano. Felix Serrano. Well, fine, okay. I don't have good Juan eyes. Juan Jose Reap. I'm not sure what nationality that is. R Y P. What kind Reap? of last name it's is that? It's funnier Ripe. to let them do no, it. No. Um, yeah. Fair enough. But uh, Felix. Um, yes, Toby is half right. David Schwimmer actually did not write it. It was actually uh, David. No, I say Serrano. David Schulner. Oh, Serrano. No, Schulner. Schulner. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Sorry, David. I'm sure you're listening to this podcast. Yeah, sorry, uh, Toby means no offense. Um, I only mean respect. Anyway. I suggest that we start it off with the uh, the picker. Um, or should he wrap Mr. it up? Mr. Sager. No, Ooh. I can wrap it up. Yeah, I think I'll you should wrap, wrap, it wrap it up. He'll okay, wrap it up. Okay, okay, okay. Well, then, uh, if you guys don't mind, we can go clockwise. So yeah, yeah, I'll let's go. go. First. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, and he uh, just finished a book like two minutes ago. And so did you. Yes. That's, well, that's Toby's not, more like 32 that. minutes ago. Yeah, this is true. It's fresher in our mind. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, okay. and I um, finished it like six months ago or something. So, <laughs> Ooh, man, oh man, this week. thing was just like Orphan this... Black. Hello, just... <laughs> hey, you're stealing my lights. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. So I actually had to ask the guys. I uh, Toby said earlier before the podcast that it was like Orphan Black. I never seen Orphan Black, but I heard it's uh, brilliant. I heard she has a great smile and a nice uh, um, tata. End. Nope. Tata is not the ass. But oh, don- shit. She has a nice badonkadonk. Right. Yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, to be honest, 
I enjoyed the read, but if if you put a gun in my head, meh. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't, I mean, clone stories are tough, right? I always have to imagine any clone story that I'm going to read, it's going to involve the government, there's going to be some conspiracy somewhere, whether it's a TV show, a book, a graphic novel, or a comic book, um, or any sort of artistic medium, I, uh, the government or some black ops team or whatever is going to be probably involved, um, and I know that you have an answer to that, I'm just, my, uh, my, <laughs> no, it's fine. two minutes, um, so, yeah, I liked it. I thought that the art was channeling a little bit of Frank quietly. I don't know this Juan Jose Reap guy. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I, I, I do think that it's detail-oriented, like, quietly in terms of the, you know, he made sure to get every single wrinkle that, uh, that a human face could possibly have. Um, and then a couple dozen more. There's a couple and, pictures and fish of the scales. vice president where it's just like... And they have fish shit. scales. No, no, that's just, I think that's like the uh, the shading. Yeah, but it looks like fish scales. It does kind of look like fish scales. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, um, I mean, I like the idea. It, it It's right up there with the best clone stories that I've ever seen on TV or read. Um, and uh, I like the writing more than I like the art, but the art was not bad. It was just, I have said before in the podcast that I'm not the biggest Frank Quietly fan, and I think that he was channeling a little bit of Frank Quietly. Um, and so the idea was good. It just seemed a little cliche in the whole government conspiracy. And so, by the way, as I'm sure he's just not mentioned you, last actually. week, um, that it was picked up to be a TV show, yes. which good on Brock for picking up. Uh, I know up a Brock book that, felt something uh, that, uh, <laughs> that would later be picked up as a TV show, but or at least announced. Um, Maybe I'll make four hundred. Maybe I'll make another four hundred dollars on nine issues. Well, there you go. You can Peter Pan's are fast. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised at all. It's very easy to make a comic book show where there's some secret government agency that's behind the clone project and it's a big conspiracy. Um, so, yeah, my my reaction, are, are we doing a um, score out of five? Are we doing a letter score it's, or are we doing out of ten? Uh, what are we doing? Well, I just do it kind of as a well, no, yes no, no, or it, indifferent. No, you got, no, you got, no, you, no, no, no it's no indifferent. I don't yeah, like that's different. bullshit. We got to do a, a Brock uh, score. A Brock How many score. Brocks does this out of five <laughs> or out of ten? How many Brocks does it get out of five or ten? Charlie, five or ten? What are ten. You? I'm used ten. to ten. Oh, okay. Out of ten. How many Brocks is this? Oh, man. What, what, what is a one Brock and what is a ten Brock? Oh, a ten Kingdom Brock. Kingdom Come is a ten Brock. Ten Brock. <laughs> Kingdom Come. Great yeah, one. Yeah. Or maybe a great Marvel book is a ten uh, Brock. <laughs> is this a new take on the Gabrielle Anwar scale? Yeah, Brock I, shout I don't out. know. I guess. Um, I have no idea what just happened. Inside Joker Alert. It's a geek, um, it's a geek box. And, uh, and a one Brock is X Men Legacy. Um, okay. No, 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 no. X Men book. Well, <laughs> a one, a one scale, Brock is an X Men. X Men Legacy is can't even get on the Brock scale. <laughs> oh, it's a no Brock. Let's, let's fuck be, you. Uh, it's, it's a no it's Brock. No Brock. Um, on on my uh, Brock scale, um, I would probably give this about. Um, I don't know. I'd give it like a five Brock. I wasn't that. I wasn't that. I, I need a book that's going to fucking draw me in. It seemed a little cliche. The art was fine, but not great. The writing was better than the art. I give it a five Brock. That's oh, fine. Toby, oh. Tobias. Oh, shit, man. Brock, you're going to not like me because uh, I kind of agree with Bryce over here. I'm sorry. Because, you know, I, I gave it a fair chance. You pick a book, I'm totally going to give it. Why does it feel like we're defending? Like, well, I don't I'm have not, to defend I mean, this You know, book. you, you chose was, a book. You I know, just that, picked a book to read it. If I no, picked a book and, and, look, people were, and, and people were not enjoying it, I yes. would be like, look, I respect like, your you for not liking choice. My, my opinion. <laughs> well, no, That's kind of how I would feel. I respect <laughs> your choice picking or choice of choosing. I'm not sure what I'm saying right now. But I respect your choosing of this book here. So I wanted to give it my full attention, give it a shot. It's not so, I, honestly, it's not something I would have ever read because you know I, I look at the art; it's not my thing. Uh, uh, the fish scales really throw me off. I really don't like the fish scales. It's really just shading, but it yeah. feels like they look. You like know that it's scale. not the writer or artist's fault. Is the artist's fault or the inker? Maybe I think it's the inker or the colorist even. Because I look at the sketches in the back. There's some sketches at yeah. the trade. And the sketches look wonderful. Yeah, the sketches, yeah, the sketches look, look amazing. Yeah, yeah, the sketches look in amazing. In the back of the graphic novel, yeah, for those I mean, of you that didn't buy If the book it. was in this art right here, and yeah. I'm pointing yeah, for I the totally listeners, I'm that. pointing at the art in the back, it's really There's cool There's a sketchbook looking. at the end of the graphic novel. I, I would totally yeah, actually read this book I think book it's, probably, it's probably the colorist or the inker. Something is off, and I don't like it. But anyways, I, I, I want to give it a fair shot. So, you know, I let go of everything and read it. Uh, uh, the first thought I had was um, I, I felt... Uh, you know, you could take this with a grain of salt. I felt the dialogue was a little flat. Mm-hmm. That's just, I mean, it's just me. Uh, 
maybe it's just the art that I mean for me a lot it's always a combination I mean yeah. you know I, I when I originally flipped through a Frank Miller book I was like what the fuck is this shit this stupid art and totally agree that's you know, a great like, call. but then when I read it I was like holy shit this yeah. is the best thing ever right so maybe the art made me feel like but like I you know already said I'm not really on the art here maybe the flat art made me feel the dialogue is flat it's yeah. quite possible if maybe a different artist drew this with a little more dynamic range. I might have enjoyed this more, but this is what it made me feel. Um, uh, You know, I felt the story was a little flat. It kind of like, you know, there's the cliches. Uh, I did like the uh, scene... Can we talk about scenes in here? Yeah. We, oh, yeah. It's, yeah this is yeah. A, our review of the book. Yes, yes. I, I really like the scene when, when the dude sets uh, the, the bad guy. Uh, was it Patrick? Yeah. yeah Patrick. He, he goes and meets Patrick and he, they, they, they do the they meet up. And, you know, so basically the main guy's wife gets taken and yeah. they have to go figure out where they are. I actually really enjoy the scene where he sets him up to take him to see his wife. Yeah. yeah the deal. I kind of like that part. I was like, when I saw, I was like, eh. And I got to that part. I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, well, that, that, that's a good point. Where the character actually, the, the character initially is kind of eh. Yeah, but I mean, once he does that, it kind of like he's taking the reins and doing. So yeah, I, so. I felt like there was a little life mm-hmm. in the book after that. You know, um, then we go to the uh, and then I kind of look at. Look at uh, there's a lot of wrinkles. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's we, trying to make it realistic. I guess. I yeah, we're looking at the. Um, no, so does Frank the vice Marley, pr- and, and president that is a taking that some a shower. People love and it's just. I mean, Ryan probably loved it. I just vice it wasn't. president. I thought this vice yeah, president. Yeah, he's the vice president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. vice president. Um, anyways, didn't um, read it. I uh, I did so. Read it. <laughs> and then you know, then I thought it kind of went boring again until the very end where the the finale happens. I thought, okay, that's really interesting again. Mm-hmm. So you know, I'm partly curious to see what's next, partly not because it didn't really grab me to begin with. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Do you go, want to talk about Orphan Black? Yes, absolutely. People go watch Orphan Black. Um, <laughs> Don't there's a lot more character. Don't read Clone. Go watch Orphan yeah, Black. Yeah. No, I, no. I, I mean, it felt it felt a lot like Orphan Clone Black. Clone is way more digestible than Orphan Black. Well, first of all, it's a female, so it's a lot more easy on the eyes than uh, fish scale uh, well, that humans. De- depends on you know. Oh, that's true. That's style. true. I mean, if they're like fish scale humans, then maybe read the, the Clone <laughs> instead. Uh, uh, for those of you that haven't read it, there's no fish scales. Yes, Toby's there is. going Look way at that over. Shit. I know it like, is fish scales, but. It's just the shading that they the, used. The it's not as bad as Toby's at, making it seem. Yeah, All right. but the sketches are pretty so, so, really so, 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 Toby, overall, it just, how many brocks would how you many give brocks? Toby? Uh, three or four. Ooh, you know, ooh, uh, man, maybe oh, five. Man. Maybe I'll go five. I mean, no, no, no. Three four, or four, he said. Four. Four. I go with okay. four. I mean, four or five. It's or not Brock. as horrible as I thought it was going to be, but it's not th- uh, as good. Thought as it was gonna be horrible? See, that's never good when you're like, it's not as horrible as I thought it was going to be. But it's still horrible. reading the yeah, but it's worse. I, I've read I mean, far were you, worse. Were you pissed off that you had to read this book, or no. were you just like, eh? no, that was no, a very no, uh, not at all, not okay. at all. No, no, and, I, and, and look, it's five issues. It's very digestible. Yes, yeah. and I'm totally on board. But um, guys, Orphan Black has way more character, better fleshed out story, and a female, and a female that's really cute and, and has a beautiful a smile. Book. And yes. it's not a comic book, yeah, true that. <laughs> So Charlie, Charlie, Charles. Okay, so lay it out. Pass Charlie the book so he, he can. Yeah, yeah. So he can, uh, so so he can some memory see the vice president's like, wrinkles. Yeah, yeah the vice president <laughs> in the shower. You don't you don't see his penis though, luckily, because there might be a lot of wrinkles there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna just start <laughs> out with hey, this. Guys, I'm gonna Charlie vacation. talk. I like Clone. I would go ahead and give it seven point five Brocks. Seven point five Brocks. Seven point five Brocks. Yes, I'm. What I do? Did I do three or four? I might have to go down to three to offscale that a little bit. (laughs) You can't drop it. You did four. (laughs) No. the The bottom line for me in this book is I agree. It's not as engaging and stuff as Orphan Black. I will agree with that. Thank you. And I think a lot of the parallels you're seeing just have to do with the fact that most clone stories carry those same kind of parallels. So they're not necessarily unique to Orphan Black, unique to Clone, unique. It's just one of the staples of this kind of story at this point. Well, I think Orphan um, Black is doing the mystery part about better. This one kind of just jumped straight in. It's like, well, oh, this is happening. This oh, one, this is happening. I don't feel like has as Any much mystery of a mystery. Yeah, it's and I think more that's about missing. a typical thriller. Don't you it, think that's missing, though? I feel like that's what's well, missing in the book. In in a weird way, I like the fact that their explanation of why they're killing the clones and stuff is very grounded in reality. Okay. I like the fact that they're basically saying, we ran this experiment, we thought it wasn't going to be a problem at the time, and then somebody went out and fucking invented Facebook, and all of a sudden people were going, I know him, but that's not him, and I know him, but... And, that's me. 
Yeah. Hey, he's stealing yeah. my pictures and making and his own profile. Ooh. I, I like basically that there was – because that's in a way kind of what makes it somewhat believable to me because that's – oftentimes what happens is people kind of get used to, well, this is how it's always going to be because that's how it is now. And you don't really foresee how technology is going to change things and basically – That's a great much, point that I didn't think yeah. of. To foil yeah. that point – you can't read this book in 10 years when Facebook doesn't exist anymore, yeah. or 20 years or whatever, because you'll be but like, wait, what? I'm reading it now. Right, right, right. And, uh, it's a great yeah. point I didn't think of. Yeah. And so sort of like for me, I like conspiracies. I like government intrigue. I like the X-Files. So there you go. <laughs> but no, I, I like this book. I like a lot of the explanation. I like the stuff they've explored since this trade because I am current on it. Mm-hmm. Um I will agree that this is one of those things where it's sometimes hard to equate for me because while a TV series has a certain pacing where they intend to hit certain marks, I almost feel like when you're reading a trade, it's almost like reading the first episode of a series. And I feel like an issue is like watching up to like a commercial break. Mm. It's kind of like this weird sort of mentality I have where – Especially when you look at something like um, the Buffy season eight comic, like that's a lot of fucking issues to quote unquote make season eight and then make season nine. It's a much slower kind of build out to get to those sort of key things. So I, I guess the way I kind of look at this is this is just sort of the beginning of the story and it sort of pans out by where the comic's gone since this and so on. So if you, if you read this trade and don't care for it, by all means, stop reading it. It is probably not for you. That's sort of the way comics are. Certain stories are going to be for certain people and all that. But I think there's – while there are certain cliches that always come up in these kind of stories, regard, and you can make the same criticism on Orphan Black. You can make the same criticism on any kind of clone story if you don't mind those sort of – things well i think the problem is not there and I you think like the, that kind of thing you'll yeah. probably like this well my, my, my thing is uh it's because there's two things that are so similar that when the one is more fleshed out in my my i mean i people might not agree it's perfectly yeah. fine to me orphan black is more fleshed out and it's so similar that you know i have no interest in reading two of the same kind of thing right if this well, is, no, I mean, you, you you're, know, you're reading, you're watching one and you're reading another, and one is more entertaining. So, yeah. and your time is limited, so you're going to pick. Yeah, I mean, no, no. no. What I'm saying is also is if there was no Orphan Black, I may have enjoyed this better. It's like you know how there's always two of the same kind of movies out oh, there. Oh yeah, I, I you agree. Pick one it, or the other. Yeah, I am not surprised you didn't care for this right. book. Not necessarily because of the art or whatnot, but yeah. just because I knew. The second you started reading this, you would constantly be comparing it to Orphan Black. Yeah, where, and there was, I mean, there's... honestly speaking, I started reading Clone before I started watching Orphan Black because yeah. Clone started first. Mm-hmm. Ooh, so I kind of had it. What do you have to say the, about that? Yeah, but TV shows take about you know a year or two to even get started. Uh, who so knows? Take that. Origin oh, versus com- like I don't want to get into which one technically. It doesn't really matter. Well, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Clone, great, great clone stories are like spy stories. But you have similar yeah, characteristics. I mean, great minds think alike. I really don't, I don't the, the, like the who did the, first. The sort thing. of bottom line for me when I started watching sort of Orphan Black, I preferred it partly because in a lot of ways there's a quicker pacing to television, as I said, compared to Naturally. comic books. Right. And two, yes, there's a certain. When you watch somebody on like a comic like this and there's a bunch of different characters that all look the same, you don't really read the sort of personality into them. Like you, you almost read them all the same because like, yeah, yeah. like you read almost – until they do something drastic, you read all Wolverine characters the same regardless of what parallel universe they're from unless they do something really drastic to sort of set that apart. Yeah. What Orphan Black has going for it – and this is where I think um, – Tatiana's acting ability really shines is she plays like eight unique characters who sound different, who act different, who kind of look different, even though they're all her. Yeah. And you, it's much harder to goddamn squeaky door communicate that through a comic. It it is a lot harder. Everybody's 
looking well, the same. Well, if you guys yeah. remember correctly, there was that scene um, where Patrick comes to the compound with the other clones, and it's that two-page well, spread actually, you know where what? you can actually see that each clone has like a different personality just based on how they're positioning, what they're yeah, doing. I mean, they're all doing different yeah. shit. The, the all, scene where he's all, talking to the guy with the glasses. different mm. people, but do yeah. they still sound the same to you in your head? Exactly. Is it's yeah. still, and like, that's something that in comic books is it's a little, little harder, harder to do. It's a harder to do. But that that panel alone, like yeah. it was, it, like the artist did a great job, kind mm-hmm. of saying, "Well, this one is, you know, the gay. Yeah. This one is more like, um, you know, a skinhead." Yeah, but here, here's what is- I would. I honestly, this is, and again, this is nothing to do with Warren Black, but again, I'm going back to it because I would have liked seeing them all dressed differently. Why were they all dressed the same? They were, they were the, military compound. They were military yeah, compound. But they, was, were not, they, they were not. They were not under military protection. They're still themselves. They right? were pretty much grabbed off the street and pretty much say. But not by the military, though, is it? Just no, by, themselves? by people trying to keep them alive. Yeah, yeah. Now you're just reading too much into it. Just all right, whatever. Basically, <laughs> if, <laughs> if, if, sorry, if, sorry we didn't let you okay. raid your closet before we saved your ass. Yeah, it, it's. I, I, I can see everybody. that. That's a good yeah. point there. Yeah, I, I can I can so, go with that. I can go with that. All right, That's so fine. Charlie, you gave it seven seven point five brocks. Yep. Nice. Ooh, Charlie. Chelsea, is the average going to go up or down? Oh, wait, on wait, 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 oh, wait, wait there. I just saw some uh, money being moved over to Charlie. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Cologne is not like uh, for me is is a really fun read. It it does it has some moments where the dialogue is a little flat. Um, the stuff so with Charlie. So you agree on that. Yeah, there's Let stuff I do agree on. I don't know. I was just curious. You know, this, the but what Charlie brought up with like the Facebook thing, and you know, the artist's ability to to give you different personalities with each clone. Um, you know, the ones that are attacking him, the ones that are trying to save him, uh, just those ones in those panels. Like to me, that's really, really good to do. Yeah, the artwork is a little jarring, even for me. I mean, I like it. It's bloody as hell. Um, but yeah, there's something off about it. And tell me you're right, those sketches, if it was the sketches, the ugh, sketches look gold. The I sketches mean, they, they look gold. are fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, so I don't think necessarily it's the artist's fault. I think it's a lot along, more along the lines of Inker or the, the, colorist, the colorist. I don't know. Um, yeah. you know, the story, like Charlie said, I think sets up more of a pilot episode kind of feel to it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, and so to, it's the five issues is the investment. You know, the first issue of this is kind of, it's a teaser, and then you get a little bit more meat as you go. Um, yes, Bryce, it's a clone story, but like a spy story or, you know, pirate story. I mean, you pretty much have some, the same kind of things that you have to hit. Yeah, no, you yeah. That's so, not, you know. I'm actually kind of cool that you picked this because it's something different to read. I well, haven't read something like this I in a while. That. That's yeah, one of the I things. Read that's, something like this in a good while. That's one of the reasons I think I kind of picked it was because it was I picked it up off the shelf kind of as a let me give this a chance you know because no no, no. Well, you I know mean, I, I was I, like because images are coming out with a lot of number ones yeah, a lot yeah, of stories and it's like we don't necessarily have time to read it um, you know, again if it wasn't for this book club I don't think I would have read it past number one I think I wouldn't even exactly. read it I think I would good job it, book club yeah yeah. yeah. Um, I, I read a couple of people like left comments uh, on the Geekbox uh, Facebook page. What they, they say? They didn't like it, or that they didn't was like the it. art. Like I think a, a lot of it. Was, about the art? Was that me? No, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, I forgot who it was. But you were writing a lot it of people, before you read it. <laughs> a lot of people have actually complained <laughs> oh, about the artwork. So I think it's. I think there's. You're either you like the artwork, right. you're indifferent, or you don't care. I, I do think if someone else drew it, it might have been more yeah. enjoyable, and I think the dialogue wouldn't read as flat. Yeah, I think the art. Well, it's also tough. Out. Like if you're. This is an image book. Yeah. If you're an image writer, you have don't have and a you're lot trying of choices. To, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's not like you like, could get you, you know get, Jim or get to yeah. whatever. But then you have to stick with that person usually because it becomes your sort of signature style. Yes. Mm. I mean, on the other but, hand, uh, you also might have the next superstar on your hands. You never know. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, what I wanted to add is, and it totally flew it in my brain. So never mind. Carry on. I'll, <laughs> I remember in a second here. Um, I think for uh, uh, the poll on the the cons- on my blog, um, one person liked it, which was me. <laughs> <laughs> Two people hated it, and one person was indifferent. I only got four votes on this one, but oh well. Um, um, well, you have more votes now that uh, you <laughs> pulled us. So now you have two likes. Um, let's see, two, two likes and three. Well, no, one dislikes. more like because I, I was the like on there. So there's one more like, right. and then it's two Charlie. more indifference. No, so, no, no, no. One indifferent and one no. Right? I would probably be a no. No. Even with five, a five, five me, is halfway. That's like, no school no, no. that I ever went to was fifty percent of passing grade. 
Yeah, but that's not except for not, engineering. We're which not. That was we're not grading. Five is not passing. Yeah, that's a that's an F and a D. Woo. Yeah. Jeez, I, didn't, I didn't know where I didn't know we're falling educational grading on the scale. Hey, I know that very well that's because I that's all that. I ever scored. I, I thought we were doing the <laughs> survey grading, which is ha- in the middle is in the middle. Yeah, that's sort of how I was rating. I don't know, dude. I need more time to think about it, yeah. but. I mean, it, I did score it's because you literally just freshly well, I, read I, it. I did score it as so my four review is the really most fresh. <laughs> so what I would say is that I was meh on it. I would uh, not recommend it versus recommending it. If that makes it's, sense, it's more of a specific recommend. Like Charlie um, said, but it's, I do agree that I would not have ever read it if it had not been, <laughs> and it could have been the next thing. You know what? I, to be honest, I felt the exact same way with Why the Last Man. Everyone what? is like, this shit is amazing. I read Yo, the first one, okay. and I was like. Uh, okay, we'll see. But I'd already bought the fucking first ten tr- uh, trades from Ryan, so I was like, "Oh well, well I'm committed. I better <laughs> uh, better read the fucking second one." Um, that and then like, good, and, then, and then the art. While I wasn't so stoked in the art at first, I, like, I just got whatever. so much more invested in the story mm-hmm. that yeah, as it went on, at first I probably may have even made a comment about how it was cliche. Although that sort of story, there's no real cliche of that story. But I probably would have also been similarly to this. More dismissive than not until I read more. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And um, yeah, I tried that with uh, 100 Why? Bullets too. And 100 uh, yeah, bullets yeah, I keep telling you, you have to keep going. Yeah, 100 Bullets, yeah, you have to get past you the have first to keep, and It's kind of weird. No, 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 but I read the first two. No, and, it's the third one that's the amazing. I know, Toby keeps telling me it's the third it's one. Third is the amazing one. No, oh. but 100 Bullets, though, it sets oh, you up. This is a 100 no, Bullets no, conversation. No, 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 let me just real fast. 100 Bullets sets you up to think in a certain way. And once you think in that certain way, yeah. they kind of blow your mind. Yeah. They, it, it, I mean, do you agree? I mean, yeah, kind of like, I, I think that this book has a little bit of that in it. It yeah. has that. It, it's setting you up for Well, have for you something. even read issue nine? It just came out. Yeah, I read it. All right. So you've read four issues past the first five. Yeah. So, right. I'm, so, I, like so totally... I know what's going on. <laughs> okay. So it's way better than it is in the first five? or it's a, It gets more intense. I mean, it, it's it, it, it's fun. For me, it's fun because it's it's it's... You it's not what? a superhero I'll, book. It's it's something that gets me to read something that's. You know what, Brock? I'll I'll, I'll read the second trade. Ooh, ooh, yeah, nice. I'll, I'll read it. I won't buy it, but I'll read it. Yeah, How about no, that? that's fine. How about <laughs> that? I'll, I'll read it. But it, I think that I think you guys hit it on the nail. The art is mm-hmm. makes it a little difficult. I you think know, it's I talking think about pacing between like TV show movie versions. Uh, I have to say, uh, Sin City. I prefer the books ten times more than I do the movie, even though it's almost like one to one. But the way Frank Miller wrote the book, the way you read it, the paneling, the way it paces, it sets you up for certain scenes. I don't think translated at all into the movie. Yeah, like the way certain things hit you, I just didn't work for me. So there, there are things that work far better in comic book format. Yeah, so I give you it. You know, I always wonder oh. when Ooh. it's a direct adaptation like that if how much of it's the fact that you knew it was coming. The next time around, that's true. Yeah, expectation yeah. setting is another. But huge thing. I think, but I think when you read, it, it's in your head, right? And so, well, if you wh- take if you take Frank Miller's three hundred, the pacing of the the graphic novel is very, very, you know, kind of rhythmic. When you yeah. get to the Zack Snyder, it's just it just goes whoop, poof, and hits you a lot faster. Zack Snyder, what's he ever done that's been any good? <laughs> <laughs> did you just hit Bryce yeah, with I the did. bottle? I did. It's uh, not glass. It was not glass. Dude, we're and gonna, it was empty. We're going to have okay. fisticuffs. <laughs> I, know, I, was just, I was just trolling Ryan. Anyway, Brock, what would you get it? Uh, I would honestly give it like 7.5, like Charlie. Because mm. it's, it, it's fun. It's enough out of my regular range. It's not great. It's not something that I'm like going to be, you need to read clone. Right. You know, it's more of a... It, you know, if somebody's looking for something this different, is a fun experiment. Like, yeah, if you want to experiment with something, or it's like I would recommend. I would recommend it if people were like, "Well, what image titles should I be? You know, what other image titles should I be checking besides out besides Walking Dead? like Walking Dead, Peter Pan's Saga. Are Fast Saga? You know, all these. Well, there's this. You know, Clone would be man. That must be there. reeling a lot of books if they want something besides those books. <laughs> well, there's a lot of books out there. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to continue reading Clone, continue reading. Charlie and I are both continuing reading and still enjoying it. So, um, I'll have to ask the master of whatever. Master there. Higgins? We're at 114. Well, how many blocks are you going to give it to, Should Mr. Be, Higgins? Oh, I'm getting master Higgins? I can't even Oh, shit. Outro. Uh-oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, shit. Here comes the music. <laughs> you can finish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Double size special. <coughs> When do I get to talk about my book club? Unbelievable. Right now? Come on. I don't have enough time. There's not enough time. No, you just announced the book. Ladies and gentlemen, by which I mean 
just gentlemen. Well, I we're going to get a Marvel no, no, book. Yeah, ladies, okay, I got, I got, really? I, got the, I got the cash register working, which means I can sell product tomorrow. So I'm, I'm at least most of the way done. Yeah, just so everyone knows we're about to get a Marvel book. Yeah, so uh-uh. th- uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I hope uh, Brock and everyone it sounded okay. I was, I was sitting there listening in. So hopefully you guys didn't miss me too much. Um, Bryce. Watch, this uh, is going to be it, the most downloaded episode <laughs> ever. It was supposed to be Omar's Pump, pick, but apparently Omar is in like Venezuela for a okay, month I'll or something. Pick one on that a, Omar would approve of. Okay, so we're jumping Omar to you. What's what's your pick? So for my choice, Mr. Higgins. We don't have much time. Hurry it up. No, no, do your thing. I'll Back like, in 1961, a man named Stan Lee created a series. Um, yeah, it is an X-Men title, by the way. I know that that's going <laughs> to be forbid the, you didn't the see that shocking coming. Uh, reveal of the episode. Um, but, you know, let's, let's, let's go back in history a little bit. First of all... Um, X books are the. Like, I have to get up in the morning. Can we just? I've been here for thirteen hours. No, I like, I like I, and then Ryan to tell you it's out of print. <laughs> no, I like. I like. It actually Bryce's might be out of print because thank you, you have yes. to pick something else. Oh my god! Because that was the no, I, I like this epi- let, let, let Bryce do his thing, please. You so, know what? Well, hold on, hold on. If the book is if the book is available on Comicology and you buy it through our store, I'll allow it. Of what? Unbelievable. Whatever he's going to pick. So part of my story will ensure its availability because I have two backups to my one choice. Um, uh, unless all three are uh, out of print, which is fun. Um, so, You're look, fucked. we can all agree, I think, at this table that the X-Men is the, the X-Books are the greatest the thing X-Men? that happened in comics um, in the history of comics. And beyond that, um, uh, and I say that 100%, um, well, not 100% sarcastically, but anyway... Uh, we've had lots of different phases of greatness in the X-Books. Okay, look, we have the Stanley Lee re- really set up what would become the greatest franchise of all time. Um, we had, I mean, can we talk about how the Claremont Burn era is possibly one of the greatest collaborations in, uh, in comic book history? Um, yeah, probably in the top five, if not the number one. Um, and then you have later things like the uh, the the Jim Lee era, which really made anybody that uh, grew up near the '90s love the X Men more than anything else. Yes, there are certain uh, there are certain Charlie, these renaissances yes. that come about within the X franchise. As much as I'm not a fan of the X Men, you're not wrong. So thank so you keep very going. much. Yeah, keep I'm going. not wrong. No, you're not actually. No, um, you're wrong. So thank you for corroborating. Um, so there are certain uh, the, these things, the, these things that come they come in cycles, right? Yes. It gets shitty, it gets amazing. It gets shitty, it gets amazing. Um, there, there's been a long time since the Jim Lee era that it, uh, it, it went where it was not so great. But and there that's was what we're going to read. Unfortunately, <laughs> maggot. <laughs> unfortunately, the origin of maggot trade paperback is out of print. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. Maggot. Yes, I love maggot. Um, yeah, so the Joe Mad era, a great era. <laughs> the writing, not as good as the art, so unfortunately um, that has come to pass. But how good was that Gambit reveal <laughs> issue? In fact, uh, uh, yes, I was in yes. your home country when I read that issue. I had yeah. to buy it for like $7 or something. Which like home country? Switzerland. Oh, excellent. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, but then slowly but surely, uh, even though the art had gone down and the writing had also gone down, there there started to bubble up, and only X readers will notice this, okay. slowly okay. starting to... Getting kind of excited. The surface, right. Was uh, was was better and better writers and better and better art. Ooh, which, uh, named um, Grant Morrison and uh, Frank Wiley. Oh thank no, you. no, I Actually, agree on the I writing, but do, not on the art. I want to do a little. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I want absolutely. to do a little double asterisk. So I'm Omar today, by the way. If people didn't realize, <laughs> uh, totally. Uh, we have to limit the intros to these stupid huh? things. <laughs> charming himself. Yes. Um, so I did not pick a Morrison or a Whedon run Excellent. because I think that those would have been a little too cliche and probably everybody's read them. And also, I can't follow up a Morrison quietly run. Yeah, with we, can't, we can't. We can't. We can't do that I do to Ryan. That those were great issues. Uh, I hate quietly, but those were those Agreed. were. You cannot disagree that they were not seminal. Um, uh, seminal period of time in the X Men history. I'm actually really excited right now. Whedon's run. Um, it, I'm just waiting to find out that he's picking like a 50 issue run. Oh, somewhere. yes. <laughs> Avengers versus. No, just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> So um, anyway, so while X Men is, is is recovering, um, a rise little, of the Shi'ar Empire. A little writer known. Actually, I almost chose that one too. Uh, I have so many that I almost. Uh, I've been in turmoil over this decision ever since I found out Omar was talking. We're about. reading Days of Future Past. So no, that's um, old. all of these new uh, these new stories are coming along, and then along came a little known writer, and this was before he became that popular, named Brian Michael Bendis. Ooh. And Brian Michael Bendis, with Oliver Copiol, is that how you pronounce his last name? Came up with a little known story called House. 
of M, which is not my choice as well. But <laughs> oh, I was getting really worried there. I was like, like hopefully it's not. Like, no, but everybody's no, read House no, of M, so no, I'm not no. going to choose I House was of like, M. Oh boy. Um, so that was a great story, um, very transformational in the period of the X Men and the X Universe. But what came out of the House of M, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my choice for the August comic conspiracy book of the month reading is going to be second coming which is um part of a trilogy so after house of m came a great trilogy of big uh within the x universe crossovers starting with messiah complex which was my number two choice if second coming was out of print um followed by i probably actually would have picked the second one which is messiah war because i'm a huge i have a huge dude hard on for strife are you having us pick the last my part turn. of this um strife why cable, don't you pick messiah complex so, so does Archangel, charlie deadpool look at him he's smiling right now x force the new mutant like it was a great it was a great arc in my opinion messiah war but it was a little too geeky a little too fanboy um and so it became it came down to um messiah complex versus uh, second coming the reason i chose second coming was because look Something that a lot of people I don't think realize is that Mike Carey is, I think, one of the most underrated, great X-Men writers uh, this decade, if not these past two decades. Um, he gets almost no credit um, for being uh, for being a very good X-Men writer, um, kind of like Jason Aaron was until recently, in my opinion. Um, Plus, he likes he, to kill Cable and bring him back. He was, uh, well, who, who can blame him? Yeah. Um, just makes Cable that much more epic. Um, so... Uh, he was the big Rogan Gambit shipper, which, you know, I love. Um, they finally, they started to give him more and more responsibility, which culminated in the, um, I don't even want to talk about it, uh, Age of X, um, <laughs> which was just... Hey, Bryce, real quick, there is a second coming uh, Revelations trade paperback and an X-Factor one. I'm assuming you're just talking about the main second coming storyline. the line. main second coming. Okay. So... And I don't know. And if it's not, then I would choose Messiah Complex because I think that it was like neck and neck for me. It's but still available. And we didn't have any out there? No, you did not. Okay. Or Messiah Complex. Okay. Um, or Messiah I, War. Oh. I would say do Messiah because that's the beginning. Um, look, if I had my choice, I would say read all three uh, just because they're they're all honestly very good. The writing is very solid. Look, it has, I think, Warren Ellis. Uh, Brute Baker might be in there, although I don't think he's in Second Coming. But it's, it's Warren Ellis. It's Christopher Yost and... Kyle Craig or Craig Kyle or whatever his name is, um, who who are great. Oh, they did, they're great. They did the they're awesome. X Force, which was great. they created X twenty three. They created X twenty three. They created X Force, which would later become Uncanny X Force under Remender's hands and Ooh. become an incredibly popular series. Very um, awesome. It's got uh, uh, um, uh, Messiah Complex is actually out of print right now, and so is well, actually I don't see Messiah War trade. Jeez Louise. Man, um, and I, anyway, Mike Carey. So I, just I don't want to get too much of a, a of a dude hard on towards Mike Carey, but I really think that he was underrated, and I really think that he deserves some reading. Um, I think that he uh, Messiah War is available. Messiah War. All right, well, read that if you can't find the other two. But um, anyway, uh, and also David Finch as the writer. So just to give you guys a That's little heads up. Artist. Um, right, right. I'm sorry. You said writer. He's the artist. Oh, I was just I was just going on all the creators. Sorry. <laughs> yes, David Finch obviously is the artist. Fucking no, a I like, very I good. I like Second Coming. I like the very whole Messiah, good artist. Messiah so for those of you that Messiah don't War. know, um, Messiah War. Um, just to keep it really high level and quicker than uh, Ryan would expect me to, um, uh, <laughs> is follows the. Follows yeah. the Charlie events. just left the table and uh, like he's been over in the section. So Messiah Complex follows the events of M Day and it involves the Reavers, the Acolytes, like all these different the Marauders, the X Men, X Factor, X Four. It involves everybody and it's a great, great story. Um, in fact, I almost want to like go back and, and switch it to Messiah Complex, but I won't. Um, you can't. It's out of print. <laughs> it, it's a great. Uh, it's a great story if you can get your hands on it somehow. I bound it, so suckers. Um, and uh, in the end, involves. Well, actually, I don't want to spoil the ending, but there's a great ending that uh, leads to Cable's solo series uh, with uh, uh, somebody Sorosinski that I can't even pronounce his last yeah. name writing it, and uh, Oliver Copiel. Um, uh, yeah, there was di- it, there was different artists on which that was thing. like a two year long series which was great. was great in the midst of which um, was where Messiah War occurred with Deadpool just because Marvel <laughs> decided that they could add him into the series and sell more books even though he really wasn't related at all um, and uh, an X Force which was in the capable hands of the of Yost and Craig. You're, um, you're just making up for Charlie's San Diego Comic Con rant, huh? This is, by the way, going to be like 10% the length of Charlie's. 
and by the way, way more interesting to X Men fans <laughs> since his story involved no X Men. Um, Makes you feel any better? All real X Men fans have already read this. That's well, true. I'm trying to I'm trying to open it up to to Ryan's DC heavy uh, podcast. Um, anyway, so Messiah War was great, and then it ended with uh, the end of the Cable ongoing series, which sort of dovetailed into Cable with Hope coming back to present day, and sort of what that means with regards to the fact that Bastion, great villain, had been sort of bubbling up again under the surface as well. What do we do? Does uh, does anything happen to Nightcrawler that would lead to him coming back in a couple months? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, hey, and, a, and and X Men comics is going to have Firestar in it. I'm happy for that, Ooh. dude. I heard that in the last podcast. I was so excited to bro down with you but i missed it i'm sorry but i'm very when excited. it comes out um anyway second coming was uh i think just as as good as as messiah complex you're right, you're right. um except that i could right. you know they'd had more yeah. I, I wanted to draw more attention to my carry i think he did a better job in in uh, in second coming um we'll, we'll we'll have much more to talk about wait so in a couple exactly weeks what's the book trust what, that what I have are x men's second coming Second coming? X-Men's, X-Men's second, second coming. coming. It is available. So, not the first. Not the not first the coming. If you can read <laughs> Messiah second. Complex and Messiah War, those are great. It is standalone, uh, contrary to what Brock well, is sort I'm, of I might have to No, it's, it's standalone, but it's the, the last portion. I may you have appreciate to... it more with the other two parts of the trilogy. It's a, it's a, I would say, soft trilogy. I would say trilogy in quotes. But it is a very good standalone issue. Uh, it's got a bunch of Nimrod. It's got a bunch of great writers. It's got David Finch. It's got other great artists that, who are escaping my memory now. I will talk about it much more at length, unfortunately, right. for the listeners when the when the review comes. By the way, I give it. Are going to have the probably, same length of the no, intro to actually get it. to talk can't about it? it. You already rated it. Rate you can't it. Rate no. It. no, no, you're just Not picking the book then. right now. All right. Picking. Well, spoiler alert. It's a high rating. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> all anyway, right. That's it. Second coming. X Men. Right. Go get them all. All right. All right. We will have this here available comic conspiracy very soon. Um, thank you everyone for listening to this episode uh, thank you for uh, hopefully continuing to listen after I bowed out and thank Brock for continuing to uh, sorry I didn't to get take to do any them. questions uh, yeah it's fine we were in super long years there was so a couple of good ones yeah we'll, we'll, we'll catch up next week and I have more access to it and um, the store hopefully is in one piece in one piece and functional um, thank that, you. That's ca- my job tomorrow. <laughs> thank you, cash register and printer, for working. I appreciate it. I How's require me. I require you to take money. Thank you, rug, for really hurting my knee. <laughs> um, that oh, I was like on the on my knees putting those statues in and stuff oh. like that. Oh, jeez, no good. Um, we can get a pad for that. All right, uh, oh. we will be back next week. Uh, if you want to listen to this episode or any other any of our other episodes, you can go to uh, comicsconspiracy.biz or geekbox.net. Uh, we all have random other crap we do. Brock's got his blog at spiritofbrock.com. Omar, who, be, who will be back in like a month, so he's going to be gone for a while. But go visit him at uh, comicsanddekine.com. Uh, uh, Charlie's got the Infinite Long Box podcast at infinitelongbox.com. Uh, go listen to that. I think they had an episode about Comic-Con. Maybe not two. I don't know. Just one. Just one. All right. Wait, what? What are we just saying? We're all on Twitter. I'm Ryan Higgins Ryan. I, Brock's I, I Brock Sager. Omar is stop being on Facebook and listen to him. And oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Omar is Comic Sandekine. Bryce Larson is Larson Bryce. Uh, Toby is Toby XI. Charlie is Insanity in Chaos. Go follow us all on Twitter and, and send us questions, and we will hopefully read them next week. And go uh, by Flashpoint. Yeah, go by Flashpoint on Tuesday. Go to our digital store, digital.comicsconspiracy.biz. Uh, you can send us an email at uh, thecomicconspiracy at geekbox.net or uh, the contact form at geekbox.net. Forms at geekbox.net. You can talk to us and talk to us on there. You can listen to Geekbox, our parent oh, podcast. I, yeah, I always forget to plug the other podcast. Not that they need it, but you can listen to the Geekbox, uh, geekbox.net. You can listen to the Comedy Button. You can listen to the award-winning Good Job Brain. And uh, I'll Talk, which is our um, uh, podcast from the uh, listeners and the community members, uh, the I'll Talk podcast at uh, I'll Talk. I think they have a site. Is it just alltalk.com? Eh, worst case, just get it on iTunes. Let's all talk. It's really good. Uh, yep, that's it. We will be back next week. Uh, for for the actual episode 118 and hopefully <laughs> a store full of functioning comics. All right, bye. The comics aren't broken. I know. They might be. <laughs>